three women's fragrances that I find very sexy. You want to find out more? Stay tuned. What's up, fragrance family? It's your boy Neeb with Aromatics. Today, I have three fragrances that are marketed for women, considered feminine fragrances. And I'm going to introduce them in my, I don't want to say least favorite, but in the order that I enjoy them from least to most. Now, keep in mind that I enjoy all of these fragrances. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the number three spot, and that is Paco Rabanne's Olympia. Olympia was released in 2015, and it's considered an amber floral, but the notes are a little bit different than just an amber floral. It's got notes at the top of water jasmine, green mandarin, and ginger flower, and then we have the vanilla, salt notes in the mid, ambergris, and cashmere wood, with some sandalwood in the base. So let's do a little opening really quick here, and I'll tell you guys what I get so right away off the top there isn't much of an alcohol blast and I actually enjoy it so Paco Rabanne's you know bubble gummy sweet type of fragrance it's definitely that along with some salt so in the beginning I get a little bit of that jasmine and just a little bit of ginger as well nothing crazy the mandarin is there but it is a green mandarin so it's a little bit green but Definitely the star players here, ladies, is the vanilla and the salt. Very sexy. The ambergris also there. It gives it like a little sharp undertone. It's not a metallic scent. And then you have that smooth base of the cashmere and wood and the sandalwood. So basically what this ends up turning into is a smooth or creamy vanilla with some notes of some salt. I find this one to be very sexy, and I wouldn't really consider it a summer scent. It wouldn't be the worst to wear, but not the best. But I think this will shine the most in the fall and the seasons, those transitions from the warmer weather into the cooler weather. So at the number three spot was Paco Rabanne's Olympia, and you can find it relatively cheap. So all these are going to be uh, fragrances that are found on discounters, and they are all designer fragrances. Number two spot has to be, excuse the bottle guys, we don't even have the cap for this one, but it's Salvatore Ferragamo's Sinorina. Sinorina is really freaking underrated and it's a pretty good fragrance. So Sinorina was released in 2011 and this is a lower, you can find this relatively cheap and it's considered a fruity floral. You've got notes of red currant and pink pepper at the top, some rose, peony, jasmine, and panna cotta. So panna cotta is a dessert, milky dessert. It almost looks like flan. It has some coffee tones in it and musk and patchouli is also in the base. This opening, give it a second to breathe because it does open kind of alcoholic, but once it breathes, honestly, I would wear this. That's how good this smells. This trickles in more of a unisex realm. I mean, obviously, mind you, the bottle looks like something, you know, definitely I would not showcase this, but it smells really, really good. It has a milky lactonic uh, frothy quality, which I absolutely love in most of my fragrances. And it kind of resembles something of iris. So I know you see that rose there in the peony and jasmine, but the combination of those uh, florals gives it a lipsticky or a creamy iris. It's a touch lipsticky. So if you enjoy those lipstick type of fragrances, this is definitely a good one that uh, doesn't have the note of iris, but it accomplishes that same feeling. And so that panna cotta, you can actually look it up yourself description of a panna cotta is basically a sweet and gourmand smell so it does have a little bit of a gourmand aspect super underrated fragrance i hardly ever see anybody talk about sinorina but yeah so the profile of a panna cotta is milky coffee note that recalls the famous italian dessert so it is pretty accurate italian dessert really really solid for a pickup panna cotta musk some patchouli in the background not really any i get a little bit of that pink pepper and it's kind of a quality of a fragrance i feel like this would be something that victor and rolf would release and mind you for reference i love flower bomb i love flower bomb nectar midnight most of the victor and rolf fragrance releases are solid for women i absolutely love them so if you're in that realm of fragrances or you enjoy that 
Sinorina is a good one. Mind you, don't sniff it right away. Give it a second to breathe. Sinorina, very solid. If you're a sucker for gourmands, definitely check out Sinorina. And at the number one place for this three fragrance list, there will be more fragrance lists that are marketed for women. This is just the first one that I'm making. So this isn't my absolute favorite for women as far as fragrances goes, but it definitely deserves a place in this list. And that is, believe it or not, ST DuPont's Pure Bloom. Pure Bloom is sexy, it's mature, but it's not too mature. It's considered an amber floral, and you've got notes of sour cherry and pink pepper at the top. We've got tuberose and orange blossom in the mid, and then we also have cashmere wood and patchouli at the base. So a little bit of sour cherry in that opening, but it's not a bad sour cherry. Give it a second because it does open sour. And some of, some people could, you know, take that sourness as an alcohol blast, but it's not. And then the pink pepper, the tuberose and orange blossom is gorgeous in this one. The initial blast will come off a little bit mature, but let it develop and it develops so sexy. This is a little bit more mature. You have to probably be over 25 but it is so sexy. It turns into this very fresh and sweet at the same time type of floral scent. You can definitely detect the orange blossom. Pink pepper is very slightly there. The cherry remains a little bit. It does tone down. It's a different cherry than you're used to. It is a sour cherry for sure. And then we have that patchouli in the base as well. Very, very close. In, in competition with Sinorina. And to be honest with you guys, I think I'm enjoying Sinorina a little bit more than I am ST DuPont. And the reason why I'm deciding that now is because this is slightly a bit more mature than Sinorina. Sinorina for the win. Number one, I wasn't expecting that, but Sinorina just left its mark on me. And to be honest with you guys, this is, I would consider unisex enough for me to wear. So I'll be real with you guys. I'm going to test all of these. Yes, I'm going to test them. And personally, I don't care. Uh, feminine, not feminine. A fragrance is a fragrance and I'm going to test them all. And I will wear this to the gym. I'll wear all that so we can really get a feel of does it last? Does it smell good? Does it give me a headache? And I think that as a man coming from a man, I think that that should be worth something. I want to actually try it on my own skin and find out. So right off the top, this is very sexy. It's the perfect florals. I can't speak for performance as of yet, but you can definitely expect a future video, at least on this one. I'm in love with this, guys. I am super in love with this. So it's been a pleasure getting these on tester strips and really giving them a sniff. You can look forward to a full review for all three of these fragrances. If you found some value to today's video, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed watching this video half as much as I did making it for you guys. Peace.